Dear colleagues, welcome to the presentation of the annual conference of the European Medical Association. This is a preliminary overview of the contents of the conference that will be hosted in the Acute and General Medicine venue in London on 20, 21st November 2018. Delegates will have the opportunity to hear from the speakers within the IMA conference, but also in other conferences such as the European Acute Care Conferences. During the European Medical Association conference will be presented the BIOS project in which EMA is a partner. This is an Erasmus section targeted to dissemination of computational biology in bioinformatics, knowledge and practice. The course will be available by 2020. Its goal is a sustainable and effective approach for reaching wider knowledge, skills and expertise in bioinformatics and genetic genomics. The topics of the 2018 EMA conference are addressed to innovation goals and unmet needs in acute and general medicine training and practice. The President, Dr. Vincenzo Costigliola, will provide an overview of the sessions and of the structure of the conference. He also will chair a panel discussion on travel medicine, innovation and excellence in the practice of medicine. Dr. Ciovatto will focus on innovative practice in clinical research. Regenerative medicine is a very sensitive and attractive field of professional work and of research. Stefan Minger will talk about where we were, where we are now. And Dr. Miguel Santos will talk about future topics and challenges. Uh, so I'm Dr. Stephen Minger. I'm a scientist with a, 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 an interest in uh, applications of cells and gene therapy to, to human healthcare. Um, I think the big challenge for us at the moment is that although we have uh, cell and gene-based therapies that are showing great impact in clinical trials, one of the biggest challenges is that these therapies are extremely expensive, uh, perhaps anywhere from half a million to a million dollars per patient. And in order to really see these therapies roll out uh, across a number of different disease states, it's going to be imperative for us to drastically reduce the cost of manufacturing cell and gene-based therapies to make these more readily available to everyone worldwide, but also at the same time to expand these therapies into um, away from more orphan diseases to more clinically relevant large-scale diseases. Um, we have very good evidence now that gene and cell-based therapies in many cases can be curative for life, but the costs are just too high at the moment. And delivering these to large, large numbers of patients currently is very, very, very difficult. So it's going to mean that we're going to have to get very large corporations who have the ability to automate these, use robotics, use synthetic intelligence and other technologies to impact on the manufacturing process to reduce the cost and to make these more available. I think that's really the big challenge, but it's also a tremendous opportunity, particularly for diseases for which we have uh, currently almost no therapies available, Parkinson's disease, cancer and others.
palliative care is a very relevant field of societal and medical interest. Dr. Mercadante will display several aspects of palliative pain management in oncology. Dr. Spatrito will display some aspect of non-invasive ventilation in acute and general medicine, not only in oncology, but in different fields of application and in different diseases. Evidence and practice for enhancing healthy lifestyle are a topic of discussion very important. Dr. Palladino will display which are nowadays healthy nutritional profiles and which is the current meaning of Mediterranean diet evidence. Dr. Tognon will address comprehensively lifestyle changes, strategies and achievements. Can you imagine how much is it 20 grams of carbohydrate? Two hundred grams of apple, thirty grams of bread. So imagine that every day this is the only carbohydrate you're eating. I couldn't survive. Because I was asked to study the association between a Mediterranean dietary pattern and health in the Swedish population, which could seem really weird <laughs> from some point of view. Hi to everybody, as you just heard, my name is Gianluca Tonion and I'm a, an Italian nutritionist who, as you can read here, came to Scandinavia to study the Mediterranean night, which is kind of funny probably. So tonight I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my story and my research. The Mediterranean population tend to, tended to live longer and have a lower incidence of uh, all cardiovascular diseases like uh, myocardial infarction for instance compared to the other population and somebody started to think that it could, could have been the diet explaining this effect. Uh, let's go a little bit further. So it's a very traditional diet and traditionally uh, the Mediterranean population haven't eaten so, didn't eat so many animal products. So it's high in vegetables and fish and low in uh, animal products. And it seems that those who eat uh, a diet which is more similar to what I just said tend to live longer and also healthier than other subjects who don't. Seven country study which compared the mortality, the number of deaths due to cardiovascular diseases in seven different countries, including Finland. And Finland came out to have a very high number of people dying for uh, cardiovascular diseases. So, I mean, if somebody tells me, don't eat carbohydrate, okay, I can do it, but you have to explain me what carbohydrates are, for instance. If you tell me, eat more fiber, what does it mean? So many nutritionists, I think, and I don't know if you agree with me, have forgot to talk about food. Exercise is a medicine, but more, exercise is a therapy, like a drug. So, benefits, barriers and caveats of cardiovascular rehabilitation will be the topic of a worldwide overview that will be presented by Dr. Turkmani. Dr. Trovato will display some of the comprehensive approaches and challenges which are very relevant in this field. 
rapid response system in acute and general medicine is a very important field of work and of research. The main topics will be presented by Dr. Rubulotta, recommendations by Dr. Welsh, which is the president of the International Society for Rapid Response System, and sustainability in different contexts will be presented by Dr. Sumer. Good morning everyone, my name is Francesca Rubulotta. I will talk about value creation in healthcare for medical devices and we will discuss how can we support working together with nurses on using medical devices and looking at pricing strategy for those. It's interesting to integrate economical evaluation with medical practice. I'm passionate about patient safety and that's where my interest for research comes from. So we don't do research just for research sake, we do research because we want better clinical outcomes and better, safer care. The European Medical Association is an association of the single doctor. We try to put together all the practitioners from all European countries in order to fund the common European common interest. We would like to bring the Europe in the heart of the doctors and to bring the doctors in the heart of Europe in Brussels.